Hi people, it's George from Exploring George. Um, what we're going to be watching in a minute is me doing my um, World War II battery series. Um, so uh, enjoy. It's going to be all the way through. I've joined everyone up um, so we can uh, do that. Um, I've just been out today and got myself, a, uh, well, I wouldn't knew it was second hand, DJI Osmo Mobile. Um, gimbal I've had one before and um, it I dropped it and broke it uh, took it back to where I bought it from they said that you had no insurance with it so I was absolutely flaming you know what's it's and unhappy with that so I got another one that was the uh, the Osmo mobile um, model one I've got the model two now um, went on marketplace today and bought it 40 quid I'm quite, I'm dead chuffed, dead happy. It's got spare batteries with it. Um, I'm using it now, so I, so, here we go. Oh, there we go, no, oh, no. There we go, yep, yeah, so. There we go, whoa. Yeah, so that's just what I'm using now. So, uh, um, right, I'll get back to the videos, um, yeah. Um, it's the, uh, I think first off we get to, um, at the beginning of the film, I actually, someone told me that they've actually been there and spoke to the farmer. Uh, the first battery is, um, south of the Avonmouth docks because in World War II, Portbury dock wouldn't, wasn't existed yet. All the, the raw Portbury dock didn't exist in World War II. It was just, it was just Avonmouth. And they protected it by um, two batteries. Uh, one was at the south end in, um, near Porter's Head. And one's at the north end uh, near Smoke Lane. That will be at the end of the video. That's uh, quite disappointing. Um, I don't know really why they uncovered it like now. Because it really needs some work doing to it. But we'll be the, so the first one is a good example. The next one will be, um, as it's been um, done before, Pur Down Percy. Uh, by Lot Lees, it's um, you can see the quite clear of where um, gun emplacements used to be and um, what flat cannons um, and where they fixed the barrage balloons. Um, but then um, uh, it's head of heavily graffitied, as usual, most of the old places are. So, um, but like I said the one that's not graffitied um, is the first one. It's very untouched. A guy wants to actually spend more money into it and and reopen it as a, you know, get not get the real guns, but get some fake guns and, you know, really do it up like now to make and it's that one's nearly there. But like I said, it's got it um I forgot my it's when I dropped my gimbal about about five minutes before. Um so I was just holding the uh, phone in my hand. Um but anyway, um and then uh, the last one is um, of the uh, northern end of Avermouth, where uh, uh, this battery is, or what's left of it. Um, um, it's got quite a big description there, what what it is and something like that. And they take lots of school children there to go and look at it for their, you know, th uh, for their courses or whatever, their projects. But it's nothing really big to show them really there. Like, no, it's just where the, you will see in the video anyway. But um, enjoy the video, and um, and here we go. Hello, people. It's uh, George here from Exploring with George. Today we're in Avonmouth, and at, it's quite a sorry state. We're here at the Smoke Lane Gun Battery. Here, there's all my other series of. Uh, um, Artillery gun batteries, like you now, and uh, so I said that wrong. Artillery, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is what it says all about it. So here's I re read it: the threat of strategy bombing transformed 20th century warfare. Suddenly there was a home front, and civilians became targets who had to be defended. During the Second World War, a number of personal in anti-aircraft command reached a peak of 274,900 yeah, women of the RTC 
no, sorry, ATS, sorry, served on the guns from the summer 1941. Heavy and heavy anti-aircraft HAA sites contain big guns to engage enemy bombers at, out, at high altitude. Hence the location close to large cities, industrial and military targets. Nearly 1,000 HAA, HAA batteries were built. Now less than 200 are left. All these surviving sites are of nat national importance. Yeah. So, what are we going to start with? Well, I'm going to come down here. It's actually been marked out, really. Yeah. Now, this one, this one here, it would go up, up like that, I would have thought. Some of the other ones I've been to. But this one's in a pretty sorry state. Usually the ones I go to have all got roofs on them. Yeah. See? What remains of the roof that's been... I think it's been... Not to do with the war, but I think it's been to do with demolition of some sort. And it's a pity, really. Like, uh, uh, there you go. Got a bit of graffiti. That's normal in anything like this. It's got some original things to it. It's got this, like, big... Uh, car star and doorway with no door yeah so like it's the outside of it and again it would go more up that way they illustrated it out but uh, as you see we come down here now in the middle is the command centre the command post um, that's actually there very overgrown I'm not gonna venture down in there because it's there quite deep and there's some sort of like little hut like I've seen in the other ones all to do with the command bunkers like now and then this is pretty a sorry state because we've had building work going around here at other places yeah and uh, you've got one here that's probably been properly smacked down like now I mean it, no one like here before I just think it's been smacked down because uh, of people oh what they've been building around here like now building they've been building like new industrial areas and when they were building it it probably came down here and hey I mean like hello oh. Still a bit of wire there on that. Very rare to see this with a trench that goes down to it. On here would be a searchlight because it's round. The usual square ones have had uh, the anti aircraft guns on it. But yes, a real sorry state of this one. And they say they're trying to keep these over 200 left. The ones I have seen being in far better condition than this yeah absolutely far condition it's a shame really like now it's just like people's neglected it and because it's a heritage site they can't they can't build on it anymore although they've tried to knock buildings down to say oh yeah we're gonna knock this down what was that one's been filled in as you can see it's been filled in uh i will have a I'm glad I'm wearing trousers and boots today. Yeah. It's a bit sunny here today. Well, it's nice to be sunny. But yeah. What it is, I'm standing on top of... Uh, it would be one of the gun emplacements. Very shame. Painful sight here. As you can see, there's the wall. All around. It's just been filled in. It's a shame, really. Can't really see anything left. Oh, what's over here? Oh, hello! Look at this. What's too new to be here? Something to do with it. I'll carry on walking down here. Yeah. Right, there's the one up on Purr down, up near like these that's covered in graffiti there's the one where I went out near Portbury it was owned by a farmer very nice man he is 
seat all covered in um, and then now we've got this one there will be more I will be looking for more any comments any comments you can see on here we'll put some comments below where I can get any more near Bristol half of the bottom ones I've mentioned yeah see like all, all filled in yeah Ooh, I might be like come over here. It's a short video. I'm afraid it is going to be a short video. There you go. Just have a big top on it. Oh dear. Um, like I said, you can't really get to the command bunker because it's overgrown. I've got to be careful now because it's all overgrown. It could be a fucking hole. Oops, oh, too bad. Right, yeah. Yeah, you can tell it's a command bunker. Or maybe, yeah. There it is. It's the main entrance in there. Well, it's not the main entrance in there. That would be the window. There would be the main entrance there. Just down here. And then you come into this room. It's been, pro it's been filled in. You can make it out. Um... And there's there's the command bunker would be in there. Be a big big huge concrete top on this. Looks like they've knocked the concrete top off and just buried it. And like there's another there's the command centre. I think these were these ones here were for uh part of the command centre but also their own air raid shelter. Yeah. You know, like I said you've got the magazine one over there. But well, like I said, a bit of a sorry state. I'm not going to jump down in there because you don't know. Oh, right, I can see it. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Now, all I do is I can count that there's one, two, three, four. There's supposed to be five. Right, I'm sorry. And uh, further... One further on, but that's the train tracks over there. There might be something down there I could explore. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, so I'm walking back up to my motorcycle. It's on my motorbike today. It's not a one to see, really, to, to say, oh, to show kids and that, like, no, because it doesn't really give a good aspect. I mean, like I'd say, go to the one at Pura Down Pura Sea, like, you know, but uh, it's covered in uh, all the thorns and that, and so much graffiti, it was unbelievable. Yeah. And this was, this only went from 1941 to 1945, well, of course, for the end of the war. Uh, it's operational from 1940, initially under the 98th HAA Regiment, but crews were widely uh, deployed across the country and in the run up to D Day, Operation Overlord, and in response to the was it March 6th threat, Operation Diver in 1944, um, the site was progressively reduced, being finally decommissioned in 1945. The battery protected the northern end of Avonmouth docks firing out onto the Bristol Channel. Now, there is, I go up to here, it is, this is where we are here, smoke bin gun battery. The next battery is here, owned by a farmer. His house is down here. You go to him and say, I would like to look around your thing. It'd be a good way of doing it. And that protected Avonmouth from Portbury. Well, Portbury didn't, wasn't there in World War II. It wasn't, it wasn't, um, it wasn't built until the docks there weren't built until the 50s. But that would cover Avonmouth. But then, because they work in a square, I would reckon somewhere over in Wales, there'd be another one. Uh, because if you come in, it'll be 49, it'll come down here, the M4, and then there'll be Purdown Percy, it'll be about so here, 
be there covering there now i've been told there's another one sort of around the airport about around here well where the map would go like this like. but yeah remains of brick hut command post one two three yeah These are all, I think these are all um, pictures, uh, not from 1940, they're too clear, they wouldn't be from that, I would have thought, I'm just trying to read here, right now. Seven hundred and seventeen women were over the auxiliary territorial server were killed on active duty, well there you go. Um... Yeah, the inventor was, uh, it says there, a predictor with the electric machine instrument called Kerry, after inventor Major A.A.V. Kerrison of the Aberty Research Laboratory in Teddington. Target height, reach and speeds were predicted past electronically directly to the gun crews and plotted the main command post. So, what left? That's anti-tank gun. Close range, I would have thought. Yeah, four and a half inch night firing guns. Yeah. Um, these guns were operated by Mark IV, three and a half inches later in the war, that had a superior rate of fire and could propel a 28 pound shell to a lethal ceiling of 45,000 feet. I don't think any other German aircraft could get any higher like this. Like, but there you go. Uh, well, what was that? Then? It was a height finder. It's not a gun. It looks like a gun, but it's not. It's a height finder. Like I said, subscribe like click the bell leave any comments down below if you would be very helpful i know lots of people uh watch my videos and uh or subscribe uh i haven't got as far as saying give money and whatever and do that or whatever but yeah so from uh exploring for george that's about it for this one and this uh and this series i will put them all on YouTube so you could see them but like I said this one is a pretty sorry state I mean I wouldn't bring any I wouldn't bring any kids of classrooms down here to explain what happened in World War 2 because it doesn't really show it it just like you know let's mess about on it like you know, the one down at Portbury that the farmer owns would be a prime example but I guess there must be others around Bristol and any other towns and cities around uh, to do with any defences, to do with docks or anything. I mean, there must be ones up at Gloucester, sure less. Uh, there must be ones over by uh, Cardiff and Barry and Panath. Must be there, like that's like, because like they said, there's only two hundred left, and I found three out of two hundred. So I'm just starting this series of uh, gun batteries and artillery batteries, like those. Some are, some are exactly the same. But some are, are more widespread, like the one on Purdown, on Purdown Percy is quite big. The magazine, the magazine uh, huts they got I'm facing out now, the one up Purdown Percy, there's three up there. And one you can't even get to because it's really overgrown and covered in, covered in graffiti. But anyway, see you again. Hope we find some more, some more, more interesting ones. Um, I've looked online to see if there's any ones that are actually built up as a museum. A good example one is one the one in Portbury that he is trying to uh, get funds to recommission it because he told me somebody in Porter's Head actually owns one of the guns and it's in his house. And it's in back garden. So like, if I can find out who that is, I'd like to go and find that. He'd probably have some more he probably have for some more thing on. But like I said, it's it's one, two, three, four uh, gun battery emplacements. 
I would have thought this this must would have been a much bigger site because I would have thought it would be five. There'd be basically where that sign is. There'd be another one just to the left of it, there, and there would be more magazines like that dotted around the area. There'd be one there, and there would probably be one behind it, and there would probably be one further on down that's hidden in all those bushes there. But we can we can hope. But anyway, we're grabbing it on. Small video. Exploring with George signing out.